Cast Show with your host, Nick Freer, and Drake University head football coach, Rob Ash. The Rob Ash Show is brought to you in part by Dave Ostrom, Mitsubishi, 90th and Hickman in Des Moines. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Rob Ash Show. I'm Mick Trill, along with Drake football coach Rob Ash. Coach, convincing win, 59-7 over Quincy. There was some question going into the ball game: would be the Bulldogs be able to bounce back after a disappointing loss against Dayton? But those questions were answered quickly on Saturday. We got off to a great start against Quincy, and I was really happy for that because I didn't know how our team would react. Nick, we had lost to Dayton the week before. We had been in an emotional peak for that game and hadn't played as well as we had hoped. And we just said to our team, let's focus on the fundamentals. Let's get off to a good start. And we did. Looking for a high-scoring game. Apparently not enough points. And uh, said your son he wanted more. And my, uh, my third-grade son, Scott, after the game, he came up to me and he said, Dad, I thought you said that this was going to be a high-scoring game. They thought the other team would have a better offense, but they didn't. Our defense played a great game to shut down what has been a very productive offense up to that point. There was any question concerning Roy Fletcher after a Dayton game. Those questions were also answered real uh, quick. Uh, 13 of 15, 216 yards, three touchdowns. What more could you ask out of the kid? I thought Roy played an excellent game. You know, we grade the tapes every Sunday, and, and Roy graded out at 96%. He only had two plays he was in on where he had anything wrong at all with his assignment. And uh, yeah, he did a super job. He had the whole week to practice. He knew he was going to be the starter all week. He did the game plan all week. And if this any sign of things to come. It should be real exciting. Quincy, of course, a team that likes to pass the ball, but certainly they didn't even have an, an opportunity to get rid of the ball. Your defense had them on their heels. We were able to do a fundamental thing right in this game, Nick, which is we got pressure with our front four. We didn't have to blitz to get pressure on the quarterback, and that allowed us to play a lot of people in coverage and still make him hurry his throws. And, and because of that, it was an easy day. The defense did a good job. Drake was up 42 nothing at halftime, and certainly you weren't going to try and pour it on it by any means. And you had a lot of players got a chance to see everybody that day. We played over 100 people in this football game. That was real exciting for all the guys on our team. And more important than anything else, Nick, we got a chance to see the number two guys. You know, we played a lot of JV games this year and obviously the varsity games but sometimes those guys who are backups for the varsity who don't play junior varsity never get to play anything and these guys got to play a lot in the game did a good job but this was a game that the tone was set early and you knew from the get-go exactly what was going to happen well we knew that's what, ha what would have to be the case if we were going to have an easy time of it we had to get off to a good start anytime you're favored if you let a team stay with you and hang with it and if you don't come out sharp it can get ugly and this game was far from ugly it might have been our best performance of the year well, it was a good one as the Bulldogs went a big time over Quincy. We'll be back to take a look at the highlights of this game in a moment. Well, Coach, it was a beautiful day for football. A lot of people showed up in support. Let's watch the highlights of this football game. It was a great day. You know, it was uh, for late October last year. You know, at this time, it was about when we had those snowstorms and everything. And instead, it was just a beautiful day for a game. We were glad to be back home, undefeated in the doghouse this year. And it worked out pretty well. Started out, and Quincy won the toss and decided to take the football, which meant they had confidence in their offense. But on their first series, we were able to stop them. There was a nice tackle by Tony Acabino. Here, good pressure, forcing them to throw the next pass into the ground. And so we got the ball back uh, right away for the first possession. Here's a play-action pass from uh, Roy Fletcher to Jeff Creel. Got us going. That was our second offensive play of the game. And then on this next play, you're going to see our counter, which was our big play of the game. Cortez Hall running behind the lead blocks of Brad Besh and, and Chad Sexauer. A big game up the middle of the game, and free safety had to make the tackle. Don Sowing, fullback on a sort of zone play off to the, to the weak side. Our fullback and tailback games, I think, complement each other pretty well in this football game. Here's a pass from Roy Fletcher out to Don Sowing. We sort of had him delay and come out to the outside. We're trying to spread out Quincy in this first drive and give him a lot of different things. We had this whole series program before the game started. Three times we ran the counter. This is the second time. Cortez this time uh, got through up on the free safety again, untouched. Great blocking up front. And finally on the third time in the drive, 12th play in the drive, Cortez just powers it in the end zone. And we were able to get the touchdown on our first possession. Great second effort. Yeah, it was really good second effort by Cortez. Great blocking up front. Three times ran the play, got everything set up for us on that on that possession. And we really had been conscious of trying to get off to a good start. We programmed that whole series. We had some good passes designed to get Roy off to a good start. And our defense continued to play well. Kevin Beveridge and Craig Ortworth were just too quick on the perimeter for the uh, Quincy uh, defenders. Here's Ortworth again. 
and beverage again coming from the outside in, uh, getting the sacks and, and getting the pressure on the Quincy passing game. They like to spread you out and get four and five receivers. That's fine, except you've got to be able to protect. Now we fake that same play we had run three times. We're going to play action on our first play of our second series, and Chad Briley, breakaway Briley, they're calling him. Here's a replay. Notice we fake the same play to Cortez Hall. Everybody was fooled. Fletcher with a beautiful pass, hit Chad right in stride. He was able to take it. You know, nobody's going to catch him if he gets out in front. So that was the uh, that was the first play of our second possession. He gave us a quick 14 to nothing lead, and we really at that point we had Quincy in a state of shock. I think they thought they would get into a, a scoring battle, but they had been able, unable to move the football at all. We had it twice, and, and uh, were able to get the two touchdowns right away. Everybody was in a good mood, and it was a sign of, of things to come uh, throughout the rest of the game. We got the ball back right away from our defense and drove again. This is Matt Conlon. We rotated a lot of people in. Look at Matt's continued good effort here, trying to get ahead and get extra yards. All three of our freshman tailbacks did an excellent job in this game. Here's Matt again on that same counter play that worked well, breaking two or three tackles and getting up the field. Uh, the competition between our tailbacks now, those three freshmen, is very intense. All three guys are playing extremely hard. It's a very positive thing for a football team to have, uh, to have that kind of competition going on. Here's a nice pass from uh, uh, Fletcher to uh, Jeff Creel. They had an underneath man-to-man -man coverage, but they tried to switch. One, two guys ended up picking one receiver, and Jeff was wide open. They got him on that pass. And then Roy was able to fake the run and throw to Jeff Creel. This is a play we've used in three consecutive games for touchdowns now, and it's been very effective. Roy was under heavy pressure that time and got the ball off just before he was decked, but he got the ball away, and Creel always seems to get open on that play, and that gave us three touchdowns in our first three possessions. Continuing on with second quarter action here, this is a long pass down the sideline. Mark Simon actually made this interception, but got knocked out of bounds. Apparently, uh, I talked to the supervisor of officials here at noon on uh, Monday said the pros give you credit if you get knocked out, but uh, in college you have to land in bounds. So that was the right ruling. We did not get that interception, so they punted the ball. Chad couldn't decide whether to pick it up or not and ended up uh, not making a very good decision there. The ball might have rolled in the end zone even if it hadn't rolled in. The worst thing could have happened would have been forced to get pen deep. And here's Roy's, one of Roy's few mistakes on the game. Uh, threw an interception down deep in our own territory. And here's a key part of the game. I mean, you know, it's 21 nothing, but this is a way for a team to get back in the game quick. We'll show you this series. First of all, they tried to hit Novi Gooden, their best receiver, but Brad Nemec breaks up the pass. On second down, we bring a little pressure, and Todd DeMoss, Matt Garvis, and uh, Ortworth are all able there to, to knock the uh, quarterback down. Then on third down, they're going to pass here to the left. We've got a couple receivers out there. It's all jammed up. It went off one of the guy's hands, and Mark Simon picked up the deflection. And that touchback gave us the ball in the 20, prevented a field goal try for them, preserved the shutout, most importantly of all, kept Quincy down in the dumps. And that was a very, very big defensive effort for our football team to take that situation where we had the turnover and not let Quincy get any points. We came right back. Uh, Fletcher hits Creel with a quick pass on first down. Now watch this. Good pressure by Quincy, but he finds uh, Fletcher finds Chad Riley on the crossing route. And Chad, like he always seems to do, turns a short play into a big one. I think he gained uh, like 40-some yards on that play uh, down the sideline. Then we were able to start mixing up the running game again because we had some breathing room. That was Don Sowing on the trap. Here's a fake on the counter play. Fletcher rolls out and hits the tight end, Don Bowman, for the first down. Keeping it going, trying to use the run and the mixture of the, of the play fakes. And then we hit, hand it off to Cortez Hall on a cutback play. And Cortez had the benefit again of a big hole by the line, but he's quick hitting the holes, and that's important too. We got through for the 28 to nothing lead. That was a great turnaround. 80 yard drive after we had just had a turnover. The defense sparked us, got us going. Obviously, now things we feel that we're pretty much in control. The defense continued to play excellent ball here in the second quarter. Orworth sacked the quarterback. They called that a pass. They would have had the ball in any event. I thought Craig got there before he threw it. And then they tried the quick pass, and Steve Tennell dropped into coverage and picked it off. Good job there by Steve. They thought they would uh, get him out of the way with the inside receiver, and he just stayed in the zone and made the interception. We got the ball in good shape. Fletcher hits Sean Diggs on a pinpoint pass there out to, against a two-deep coverage to uh, get us started. Now we've got the trap. Number 44 is Todd Whittem. He's a freshman fullback from the tunnel. Getting his first uh, real playing time as a varsity player. Here he is. 
on, on the off tackle play, just barging in for the uh, for the touchdown. So we were able to take the turnover and uh, take it right in for the touchdown. It was nice to see Todd Whittem get a chance to go some because we like to play two fullbacks. Mike Stanfield's been injured. Uh, again, pressure. You can see every time they drop back to pass, we were in on them. We had tried to block the first couple of punts, and so this time we put the return on. It turned to be, out to be a good decision. Chad Riley takes the punt. You're going to see a great job here. Makes two guys miss. Good block from Todd DeMoss. Good block from Brad Nemec. Chad makes another guy miss. And again, when he gets out in the open, his speed is just too much for these uh, people that are chasing. Another big touchdown for Chad. He's only had three plays over 40 yards now in the game already in the first half. And, uh, that really broke uh, Quincy's back at that point. It's 42 to nothing. And, uh, you know, there's just nothing they could do. Even when, uh, you know, even on the punt, they weren't able to stop us. So that made it very, very difficult for them. Still a little bit of action left here in the second quarter. Yet another good play or two by the defense. Look at this pursuit. Four guys coming up at the line of scrimmage to make the hit. And now they're going to go with a quick pass again. And the other alley player, Joe Bianchi, on the other side of the formation. Plays the same kind of position that uh, Tennell does. So when they wanted to throw quickly, they couldn't because our alley players were making these interceptions, but they couldn't keep the ball in the pocket for very long because we had the good pressure. So one and a half, pretty much having it our way. Uh, 42 to nothing there. Uh, at the halftime. I'm not sure I've ever had a, that big a lead at the half. I didn't quite know what to say, but what we did decide to do was come out in the second half and play the starters for one more series just to make sure that we got the tempo established the right way. Uh, Roy Fletcher hit Chad Riley on sort of a free play. They jumped off sides. He could have thrown an interception there and it wouldn't have been a problem, but he got the good play. We got about a 20-yard gain there to, to Riley. Then we ran an uh, off-tackle here at Cortez Hall. Makes a guy miss. Good cut there. Pass to block by Sean Diggs. He gets another 20 yards or so. Again, this is excellent because you're 42 to nothing. You might think you're going to come out flat. But instead, our offense came out, really did a nice job. Here's Don Soling running hard off tackle. He gets about 8 or 10 yards. And, you know, we're picking up right where we left off. Here's the uh, counter play again. Cortez jumping over people, making people miss. Good blocking up front. I think he gained 15 yards or so on this one. Ran a couple more plays. Cortez up the middle down to about the two or three yard line. And then we ran the play fake off that same play. And then Fletcher rolls out and finds Don Bowman in the back of the end zone for a touchdown. Great drive, nice mixture of run and pass, fullback, tailback, lots of different receivers. The line does a good job of uh, opening up the holes. And that really uh, got us off to the start of the second half that we needed, gave us another touchdown, but more importantly, got the tempo established and took away any chance for a comeback. Number 99 again, uh, Craig Orwell pretty much had it his way all day. Got the big sack, 11-yard loss, so that's on Quincy's second play of the second half. And from this point on, we started getting some people in the football game. Uh, this is Matt Conlon. Again, we're using all three of these freshman tailbacks, giving them a lot of chance to run. Here's Whittem again, freshman fullback. He's a horse. He's only about, he's a, he's a freshman. He's only about, uh, you know, 215 pounds or so. I'd hate to run into him back there at the... Uh, at the free safety position. Matt Conlon, number 30, lost a ear pad out of his helmet, but held on to the football. That's the main thing. <laughs> Here's Damon Taylor. He came in. I thought Damon was in on this play, but you know, they only gave it to him down to the one, so we gave it to the diesel. That's what the players call him. They call him the diesel. He got it in for a touchdown. I mean, this was the next drive. First two drives of the, of the second half, and on that particular drive that we just watched, we're just running the football. We're not throwing the ball hardly at all. Starting to get a lot of the number twos in, the guys that have been the backups all year long and have not had a lot of chances to play. And uh, it was a very devastating effort on the part of our, uh, of our offensive team. Defense continued to play well. Here's a nice interception by another freshman, um, Darren Book. Darren's brother plays for the University of Iowa. We were real happy to get him. He's Greg Gerlach's backup at free safety. He hasn't had a lot of playing time. He's going to be an excellent free safety for us. Nice interception for him. There's the diesel again running through these people downtown. Now again, you know, this is just running the football. We had two fullback plays and two tailback plays. We just ran them back and forth. Damon Taylor with an excellent run. Excellent cut there. Yeah, the defensive back thought he had him. Damon made him miss. He didn't even get a hand on him. We got down and that drive ended in a Bill Willis field goal. So it was an exciting day for us. We got an awful lot of people in the game. Over 100 players got a chance to play. Uh, we did have some problems at the end. They, uh, we got a punt blocked. I think the cheerleaders were worn out there, weren't they, from uh, all the push-ups they were doing. Kevin Gundy from Clancy, he's got a young team. They're just building. He's only been there two years. And I'm telling him, hey, you know, just hang in. you got to get four years together 
uh, to before you can really judge the program, and, and that's you know where we are now. And we're we're fortunate. We've been able to get four years of recruiting put together, and I'm real happy with where the team is. That was a great day for us. Anita West, 59-7. Time for our Christopher's scoreboard show. Christopher's restaurant, a tradition in Des Moines for 30 years. Christopher's features fresh pastas, aged Iowa beef, and fresh seafood. His lounge is a great place to have a pizza and watch the game or the Rabe show. Look at the statistics here, Nick. I don't think I've ever had as dominating an effort by a football team. First down, 32 to 5. Look at the rushing. They had three yards rushing in this football game. Uh, and 59 passing for 62 total yards compared to almost 600 total yards for us. Uh, you know, it wasn't just a blowout by the score. It was just totally dominating effort uh, by yards as well. And possession time, almost 2 to 1. And, and their guys were very, very worn out at the end of the game, on defense especially. Uh, leading tacklers, you don't have as many guys making as many tackles because they didn't run very many plays. But Matt Garvis had an excellent game as a, as a linebacker, redshirt freshman for us. Beveridge and Mortworth, of course, had a great game, too. Uh, Todd Whittem was our leading rusher. Cortez, two freshmen with almost 100 yards rushing. And, of course, Creel and Briley. Creel having more catches, but Chad always seems to make the big plays. Coach, what a great confidence builder type of ball game. It's too bad you couldn't have played this one before Dayton got all that confidence in. And the experience for Roy Fletcher and the rest of them. Well, you know, wherever it comes, we'll take it. But you're right. Especially for Roy Fletcher, it would have been good to have a game under his belt, to feel the, you know, the way he can lead the team. But, you know, we take them the way they come, and I'm just I'm happy we got back on track now because this will give us a chance to finish the season in good shape if we can keep it up. We're we'll back to name our players of the game, but first we need to name a few folks that make this show possible. Start with a great view. Add something colorful and healthy. And don't forget to add something a little sinful. Add something steamy and delicious and really pile it on. Then make sure you add the right stuff, like good friends. Sunday morning at the Capitol View Dining Room. Brunch at the Best Western Starlight Village downtown once, and you'll be back for more. Welcome back to the Rob A Show. Coach, it's time to name our Dave Oster Mitsubishi players of the game. Offensively, defensively, the whole team, or you know, select some? A lot of good players and a lot of uh, outstanding performances in the game. But offensively, we decided to go with Roy Fletcher. Uh, Roy making his first uh, start where he knew he was going to be the starting quarterback during the week. And 13 for 15 in the game, passing 96% grade on his uh, overall grade for the game. I thought he did a great job. He led the team extremely well. He's only in his first year of competition uh, since high school. He redshirted last year, and I thought he just played extremely well. Craig Ortworth also played, had an outstanding game. They really had difficulty blocking Craig all day. He's a sophomore, uh, does a super job for us. And you know, There were a lot of great defensive efforts in, in the game, but Craig was probably the most dominating one out of that group. So two young guys have only been in our program two years as our players of the week. Also another kid that played really well is Mark Simons. He's going to be our home team pizza player interview. And this kid had what well, I thought was going to have a tough day, and it didn't uh, end up that way. It was well, Mark rises to the occasion. We usually put him on the best receiver for the opposing team. In this case, it was Noby Gooden, who's 6'4", and he's 220, has a 35-inch vertical. And you look at Mark Simon and Noby, and you say, hey, there's no contest. But it was, and it was no contest, but it was Mark that dominated. Uh, he did a good job. Now, we also covered Noby with some other people and gave some help in terms of bumping him with line of scrimmage. But, you know, Mark's always been able to rise to the occasion. He's probably the best practice player that I've ever had in my program. He's always 100% effort, one of those overachiever type guys. And he's developed into a, just a fantastic coverage guy, a great leader on the football team. Um, not exactly the most outspoken or talkative guy, but, uh, you know, he's, we wanted to get him on the interview and, and, uh, and have him on the program, so we'll see what Mark has to say. The Rob Ash Player Profile is brought to you by Home Team Pizza. Uh, 
as far as being a captain, I haven't uh, I've tried to, to put it aside more when I'm on the field. I've tried not to think about it too much and just try to, to play and practice the way I have in the past um, throughout my freshman, sophomore, and junior seasons and just kind of let you know things go the way they have. And you know, If I feel that we need some, something to be picked up, then I might uh, cut in, but I basically just tried to have the same role I had throughout my previous years. Uh, I came here and I wasn't sure exactly my major. I thought I might want to go into biology or psychology. Um, I decided on biology and I'll be graduating this May and I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with it. Uh, I thought about, uh, actually I haven't thought too much about it. Uh, I got the nickname Junior uh, my freshman year here. One of the assistant coaches uh, thought I looked like another cornerback who was then a junior. And I, he started calling me Junior that I looked like his little brother and it just kind of stuck. Without a chance to go to the playoffs, it makes it a little, uh, or you hear people saying that it makes it a little more difficult to, uh, to motivate yourself. Um, I personally haven't found that coming from a high school. It was never really in a playoff hunt. Pretty much had to just get up for every game just to, to play the game. I think that's just how people here look at it. They just look at it as, you know, in one season you only have 10 games and 10 times to, to really get after it. and. Uh, Playing with this group of seniors has been uh, fun and exciting. It's a little different because uh, there's not anyone else to look up to. Everyone's looking up to you. Um, but being with these guys for four years, uh, it's just it's just been fun and exciting and having a great time. Hi, this is Tom Baldwin, owner of Home Team Pizza. That's the only place you can get Des Moines Super Large or Large, that fantastic 16-inch pizza. You already know we make our dough every day from scratch, and so it's the freshest anywhere. And you already know we guarantee delivery in 30 minutes or you get your pizza free. But believe it or not, there's still some people that don't know that our larger large pizza with single topping is only $7.99. And it's absolutely delicious. So call Home Team Pizza right now for your larger large. When the delivery time of gasoline, diesel fuel, and motor oil supplies is crucial to Iowa industry, timely personal service and quality Conoco products at an affordable price that service professionals and their customers can depend on. Parker Oil Company of Des Moines, Iowa. The creators of the Mitsubishi 3000 GT, 1991 Motor Trend Import Car of the Year, proudly present the stunning new Mitsubishi Eclipse from 1992. Because nothing livens up a family like a little sibling rivalry. The Eclipse from Mitsubishi. The world is getting around. Welcome back to the Rob A. Show. Before we take a look at the upcoming opponent for the Drake Bulldogs, Illinois Benedictine, we would like to remind you about the Hopkins Sporting Good Weekly Drawing. And don't forget, it's worth $25, a nice gift certificate. Just send name, phone number, and name of this week's player interview to the Rob A. Show, Drake University Fieldhouse, Des Moines, Iowa, 503-11. Coach, you want to give him a little hint on the uh, name of the player? Mark Simon this week. Mark Write that one Simon. down. Write it down, send it in. Let's talk about this week's upcoming game. You're going to be on the road, the Drake Bulldogs travel over to Illinois Benedictine. You've had three common opponents as uh, they want to talk about that. Well, uh, Illinois Benedictine has wins over uh, Milliken and uh, Quincy, and they have a loss to Aurora. And we have wins over Milliken and Quincy and a loss to Aurora. So we're pretty evenly matched teams. Benedictine's had a great year. They're 6-2, and two, uh, much better than people uh, thought they would be this year. They like to pass the ball as well? Oh, they're one of the top passing teams in the country. I haven't seen this week's statistics, but I know they were in the top five in the nation uh, going into their game against Aurora uh, on last Saturday. So they really passed the football, and they've got some tremendous threats. One threat I think the Bulldogs are able to uh, do when you go up against a passing team is certainly get a lot of pressure on the passer, not allow him to stand back there and find his receivers. And you've got to give a lot of credit to that defensive line. My goodness, the pressure they're putting on. We've got to be able to continue to do that, Nick. The defensive line has to get pressure on IBC so that we can, you know, stop their passing game before it gets started. What I anticipate that they'll do, though, is that they'll probably pack it in more, double some guys like Ortworth, and, and see if they can get the ball one-on-one -on -one to Eric Green or Bob McMillan. They have two great receivers in those two young men. And certainly you as well. You, you know, I was looking at the statistics. You, uh, you're pretty, you're pretty uh, average on uh, both 
passing and running, everything's pretty much evened up there. We're more balanced, and I think if there's a if there's an advantage in the game that we have is that we should be able to run the football maybe a little better than IBC. I hope so because, quite honestly, how I'm planning to play this game is to try to possess the ball, play ball control with our offensive football team. I never really thought about it until you mentioned it earlier that uh, certainly one of the pluses for the Bulldogs right now, those tough games you played early, seem to be paying off at this point for you. I think the caliber of our competition is paying off. I think it really paid off for us against Quincy. We had played tough teams week in and week out and out, and it was really uh, evident when we went up against Quincy that we were used to playing tough teams and used to having a high level every week. I hope that'll pay off next week, too. Talking about competition, you got some great competition right now at Tellback. We saw three of them there. You, you have all kinds of backs. Where'd they all come from? Well, we had a very good recruiting year, and you know we've, uh, it was exciting to look out on the field and see Roy Fletcher, who's in his freshman year of eligibility, and then to see three true freshman at tailback and a true freshman at uh, uh, fullback with Todd Whittem doing such a good job. And, and there's other freshmen and sophomores on his football team. Craig Ortworth, I mean, we've said his name all year. He's only a sophomore. Matt Garvis is in his freshman year of eligibility. And not to, not to uh, criticize, downgrade, whatever, the upperclassmen. They've been playing well, too. We always have a tendency maybe to focus on the youth. But our upperclassmen have been complemented by a talented group of, of freshmen. And the upperclassmen have led by a great example and showed the young guys how to, how to play the game. And that's made a nice mix on this football team. One of your goals, as you mentioned a couple of weeks ago, was to go undefeated the rest of the year. You're still on that uh, march right now. I hope we can do that. We, if we can finish out the season, we'll end up with the best record in Division Three history at Drake. Uh, it's going to be a tough challenge. We have to go on the road. We haven't won a game yet on the road this year, and we've got to prove we can do that against a very talented Illinois Benedictine football team. And this is the one, really, that will help us get over the hump. High-scoring game? I think it will be. We should, I hope we can score high, and I hope our defense holds them down. That's how it went last week. Maybe that will happen again. Good luck to you. Thank you. And we'll see you back here next week on the Rabe Show.